Hi guys, Mark Azelstein with Uncork Ventures. So I'm joined today by Hayden Fig Pinot Blanc. Um, Hayden Fig's a winery up in Oregon. Um, and this is one of the few times that I'll talk publicly about a wine that won't be in one of our wider wine club programs. Um, in this case, I do have a few folks at our Explorations Wine Club level, which is the cheapest of our three wine clubs, um, that have expressed an interest in getting some more unique and more interesting grapes um, and wines in their monthly shipments. And so we're going to take them up on that, and some of them will receive a Pinot Blanc. And so, you know, this is an interesting grape to me. Um, so first, it's one that, in a sense, you know, when everybody always talks about, you know, where's the grape from? You know, if you want to try a great Pinot Blanc, where do you go? You know, and we can all, you know, kind of talk about, you know, Merlot is Bordeaux, you know, Pinot Noir is Burgundy, um, you know, Cab is, you know, people will debate that to the ends of the earth, but Napa, um, you know, where do you go for Pinot Blanc? And the answer is really kind of nowhere. Um, most people in the industry say that it's from Alsace, um, from Alsace, France. Um, you know, in reality, most of the wine that's even label, labeled Pinot Blanc from Alsace isn't actually Pinot Blanc. It's a combination of Pinot Blanc and another grape or two that they use more often. Um, it's a legacy varietal in both Burgundy and Champagne. Um, Champagne, of course, has gone almost exclusively over to Chardonnay or Pinot Noir to make their sparkler. Um, but, you know, there's a few fields of it left. Um, and, you know, in essence, the Oregon folks are still trying to find that natural complement. You know, in Napa Valley, you have Cab and then you had Chardonnay. And that was kind of the white and the red, and they kind of melded together perfectly. Um, as Chardonnay's kind of gone out of style a little bit, Napa's kind of tried to diversify a little bit. But in Oregon, they've never been able to have that kind of unique accompaniment to Pinot Noir. And Pinot Blanc's something that they've long thought could be that. Um, you know, Pinot Blanc for the longest time, uh, if you ask folks in Germany, the name for Pinot Blanc in essence means almost the exact same thing as Chardonnay. It was made in a very similar style, um, both with malolactic fermentation and kind of the oak barrels and the whole kind of nine yards. And so people use those two interchangeably to the point of, you know, a lot of people thought they were the same grape. Um, of course, at this point, we know better. Um, and, you know, Chardonnay has just become the dominant grape in the white wine category, um, where Pinot Blanc is almost at this point unheard of. Um, I think, you know, you have some folks like the Hayden Fake folks who are, you know, trying to not bring the varietal back, but just get it on the map in Oregon. And you're talking about a few hundred acres planted only, you know, where that might be the size of one winery in California, especially in Sonoma. Um, you're talking about the entire state of Oregon has maybe a couple hundred acres. Um, so I think it's interesting, um, and I hope you do too. Um, it's kind of one of those things that's happening in the industry right now is, you know, as we've gone from, you know, a few thousand, three or four thousand wineries in the United States, you know, 15 or 20 years ago, and now there's close to 12,000 or 14,000, depending on who you ask. Um, people are increasingly looking for a place to, to, to make themselves unique and make their brand unique. Um, and one of the ways that they're doing that outside of the normal kind of branding stuff that we all hear about, um, both online and in school or whatever, is that uh, they're going to try to grow something that's unique and make a wine that's unique. Um, and that might be stylistically different. Um, but I think what you're starting to see with Pinot Blanc and some of the white wine grapes is similar to what you saw in the 1980s happen here in California, where you had the Run Rangers organization, which came up and really said, you know, what, we're going to stake our claim into, you know, the business and the industry with Run varietals and no one else is doing that. Um, I think you're going to increasingly see folks kind of split off into smaller splinter groups within the wine industry and choosing varietals that you wouldn't necessarily think that they would choose at first because um, they're going to be a tougher sell at the beginning, but saying, you know what, we're going to be the ones to decide how this wine is made and we're going to be the ones to market it and then we're going to benefit when the general public starts to accept it. Uh, so once again, Mark Isstein with Uncork Ventures. Hope you're having a good Tuesday.